What is up creators, this is Tom, welcome back to another Budget Wednesday. If you're new to the channel, Budget Wednesday is a series that we do every Wednesday or there or thereabouts, every Wednesday, to, that focuses on the cheap or affordable nature of filmmaking, video production, photography, something like that, either a tip or trick or a piece of gear. And a piece of gear is what we're focusing on today. We are talking about the Canon M50. I picked up this camera uh, a little bit ago. I've already done one video on it. Last week's Budget Wednesday was on the Canon M50, but you guys saw that sort of cinematic sequence. We're going to break down some thoughts about that sequence, give you some tips to create something like that on your own. I know, I know that these clips are totally cliche, especially with the sort of film bars and that type of thing. I wouldn't normally produce this type of work, but it is a good example of the type of fun sort of online Instagram content that is perfect to create with the little Canon M50. I'm not a massive fan of the whole sort of cinematic video sort of online thing, but it is just a good representation of a piece of cool online content that again you can create with this camera. So we're going to kick things off and we're going to talk first about the gear that I used to produce this content. First of all, we of course have the Canon M50 itself, the body. Uh, I think I picked up this camera for about sort of 400 150 pounds here in the UK. Uh, you can get this camera for, you know, roughly about the $500 mark if you shop around. I'll have some links down below. In terms of the lenses that I use, I actually don't own any EOS M, uh, the mirrorless uh, lenses for the M50 yet. Uh, I'm just using sort of my standard EF lenses. So right now on this camera that I shot that entire intro sequence with, I shot that with a 50 millimeter uh, STM lens from Canon, just a fantastic lens. And that is using the EOS M uh, or EFM to um, EF uh, adapter mount. So that is the sort of default one supplied by Canon or you can buy by from Canon. And uh, the performance is really, really good. Like you get fantastic autofocus performance I was using the eye tracking autofocus most of the time throughout that little sequence shot. And uh, yeah, it's just a fantastic little uh, lens converter. And it just means that you can use, you know, I have a lot of EF lenses, so I can just use all of those on the uh, M50. So obviously that 50 millimeter F1.8, I wanted to take advantage of that aperture, that F1.8, making sure we could get some nice shallow depth of field in that video. So I used a variable ND filter. Basically when you're shooting a sequence like this, you want your shutter speed to be double your frame rate. So just as a general rule of thumb, especially when there's motion in the clip. So for this sequence, I shot in 50 frames a second. I will talk about that a little bit later, but I shot using a shutter speed of 100, which means I need a variable ND filter if I wanted to shoot outside in the middle of the day we were. I wanted to crank that aperture down. That variable ND filter allows me to use a low aperture and still control the amount of light going into the camera. Super affordable, fantastic little tools for video production. You definitely, definitely need one. Now moving on to something you don't absolutely need, but I used a gimbal for this. This is the Zion uh, Weebl S. Now it is a fantastic little gimbal. It's actually new. I upgraded from a, a, a Crane 2 and I'm really enjoying this gimbal so far. It's super powerful and it's really easy to just sort of, you know, whack a camera on and it's the perfect companion for something like the M50 where the camera is not, you know, like particularly heavy and the camera is also very small and light. The stabilization on the M50 uh, is like digital stabilization, which means that you're not going to get like fantastic stable shots using the M50. So you you do want some form of stabilization. You don't need a gimbal like this. I just had one, so I decided to use that for that little uh, intro clip. Even techniques like using a camera strap and sort of just creating an extra point of contact will help massively with stability on the M50. Another option you could get is to get a stabilized lens. All of these things will help, but I do recommend some form of stabilization on the M50 because the camera is so light. If you're shooting without anything, you will start getting quite a lot of jitters and micro jitters that just look quite quite sort of unattractive. All right, so now we talk briefly about the gear and I know we've sort of covered some sort of tips for like cinematic content with the M50. Let's talk about another few options that you can do. So first of all, I wanna talk about picture profile. Now on cameras that don't shoot in C-Log, so Canon Log, the EOS R that's filming me at the moment shoots in Canon Log. And that basically means that you're able to grade the footage, have a lot more control. Now the 
sort of cheaper, slightly more inexpensive cameras from Canon, like the M50, the M50 is one of those, I always shoot in the neutral picture profile and I just reduce the saturation by one or two stops. And basically that gives me a picture which I have a little bit more flexibility to grade, make pop. I'm sort of showing you some examples here of how I change those clips from the beginning, from where they're in this sort of raw state to the graded sort of finish look after I was done with them. Again, shooting in that neutral picture profile will give you a little bit more flexibility to do that. All right, so I know we briefly talked about lenses when I was talking about the 50 millimeter, but the advantage or a massive advantage of the Canon system is that the EF lenses, and you've also have the uh, EFM or EOS M lenses, um, there's tons of choice with that lens mount. It means that you can basically get super creative with the lenses that you're using on your camera. And it means that you're not going to be breaking the bank because there's tons of options for these cameras. I shot this entire thing with a 50 millimeter, which is a super cheap, inexpensive lens. Again, sticking to budget lens. I wanted to keep things relatively affordable using that little sequence. I know I use the gimbal, but again, you don't necessarily need that. But I also have an affordable telephoto lens that I could have used as well. That EF mount is extremely versatile and means you can get different looks and different feels for your content. Okay, now I briefly want to talk about frame rate. So I shot that entire sequence at 1080p in 50 frames a second. Now I use 50 frames a second because I'm in Europe and it's sort of just a lighting standard means we use 50 instead of 60. But the fact that the Canon M50 shoots fantastic, 1080p 50 frames a second video is really, really good. Like I don't tend to shoot at 120 frames a second where you're going down to 720p personally. That's just I just don't want to go below that 1080 realm. But the 1080p video in 50 frames a second is actually really good. It means you can slow your content down to 50% in your timeline or 60% if you're working in a 24 frames a second timeline and shooting 60 frames a second. And again, it just means that you have the flexibility of slowing things down. The M50 also shoots fantastic 4K. So if I was wanting to get a little bit more detail in any of my shots, say I want to do maybe a close up of an eye or a close up of detailing like the watch and things like that. If I wanted a little bit more detail in those shots, I could have shot that in 4K. And because of the sort of flexibility in the frame rates, the M50 has quite a few of these frame rates up its sleeve and you have the flexibility to do that. I do recommend shooting in those higher frame rates so you have the flexibility in post to choose if you wanted to slow things down or even better plan when you're going to choose something and then your sort of more natural things that you want real time, you shoot in 24 frames a second. All right, so now just another one for sort of general cinematic content. Well, content in general, really. Shoot a ton of angles, get creative with your shots and allow yourself a bit of flexibility for things like in-camera transitions. This type of thing obviously needs to be planned out. I have one halfway through the video. I'm not sure if you spotted that, I will play it now. That sort of is a good example of something to just up your production quality from just clip, 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 clip. You're actually having something a little bit more dynamic, a little bit more interesting halfway through the video. To do that, obviously I simply just sort of panned out from behind my friend's back. This is my friend Rory. He helped me out with this video. Massive thanks to you, Rory. I'll link his Instagram down below if you're interested in checking that out. But I just sort of panned behind his back. And then on the next shot, I panned out from behind the wall in the same direction, cut those two clips together, and you get a super nice in-camera transition. Just a super simple example of a nice technique that can bring your content to the next level. Okay, so finally we have a bonus consideration, which is just lighting. Now I don't tend to shoot massively in the middle of the day. I'm not a massive fan of the lighting look that you get in the middle of the day. So what we actually did was we found a shaded alley, graffiti alley, as you can see from the sequence. And that meant that we had a little bit more control over the lighting in the environment. Like, of course, we're not getting super nice sort of shadows on faces and things like that because we can't control the light in the first place. But it does mean that you're able to get still get a nice shallow depth of field and not worry too much about the sun messing up all of your shots. I do recommend shooting in the last couple of hours of the day, pretty much with any camera that is going to dramatically improve the look and feel of your video without literally doing anything. Just shoot in the sort of couple of hours uh, up to sunset. And then if you're looking for a sunset vibe, you've got beautiful sunset colors. At the end of the day, I think just always look better at golden hour. And then the sort of half an hour after sunset is called blue hour. You're going to get really nice sort of warm and friendly looking footage, much more even, much more flattering and everything is just going to look better, trust me. There you go, guys. Hopefully you have enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or thoughts about either the sequence, the camera, anything like that, drop a comment down below. I'll be super excited to start a conversation with you about it. As always, I will link the Budget Wednesday playlist down below if you want to check out any other videos in the series. And I'll catch you guys next time.